Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers, I hope you guys are doing good today. So there's a lot of drama that's going on right now with Monice Slaughter. If you don't know who Monice is, Monice was on Love & Hip Hop, I believe LA, then she jumped to Atlanta. I don't know. She's been on a few Love & Hip Hop seasons. So basically, I don't know. She's a big Barb, a big Nicki fan, but she went in the other day on social media on Meg Thee Stallion. And she felt like Meg Thee Stallion using the line Megan's Law was totally out of pocket and not okay. And Nicki Minaj ended up liking her post. So let me go ahead and read to you what Moni Slaughter had to say about Meg Thee Stallion's his diss towards Nicki Minaj. So Moni says, imagine your seven-year-old is arred and murdered by a neighbor. You fight for legislation to be passed. He's put on death row, but the death penalty was abolished in that state. So his sentence was commuted to life without parole. So now you have to live without your baby. You have to live in using that the killer is still alive. And well, a law in your departed daughter's name and honor is passed. And now for the first time in over a decade, your daughter is trending. Your wound is reopened because a bitch used it as a bar in a diss track, shaking my head. She spelled their last name wrong, but it's Megan Kanka. She says, if I was Megan Kanka's family, I would take every red cent from those single sales. I'd lawyer up and that video would be snatched from every platform. I'd sue for emotional damages and I demand that that bar be changed and I gag order the artist, period. Don't profit off of my pain or my child's passing, it's low as F. So that is what Moniece took to social media to say. And it's very interesting, like I always say, words have power. All of a sudden, here come Megan, here come Megan Kanka's father, and he's speaking to TMZ, and he's saying that he is really pissed about this diss song. So let's go ahead and check this out. Richard Kanka, whose daughter Megan Kanka was murdered in the 90s by a sex predator who at the time wasn't legally required to identify himself in his neighborhood and who Megan's law is inspired by, is filming over Megan the Stallion casually dropping his daughter's name in Hiss, the diss track that kicked off the new feud between her and Nicki Minaj. He tells TMZ that Megan dragging his late daughter's name into this explicit riddled song aimed at Nicki is disrespectful as it gets from his point of view. He notes that Megan the Stallion actually appearing to shed light on the law, which she does, doesn't change his sour feeling. Kenka tells us that using his daughter's name in such a graphic, offensive manner was highly offensive to the pain that his daughter and family felt. While he says he hasn't heard the track with his own two ears yet, he has read the lyrics and it's a no-go for him. He's really upset and I feel like Moniece kind of kicked this off. So for y'all who don't know about Megan's Law, um, it's about Megan Kanka. And she was a seven-year-old little girl. And um, on July 29th, which is my birthday, um, but this took place in 1994. So we were all kids back then. Basically, seven-year-old Megan uh, went out. She was on her bike and her mom took a nap. And so she rode her bike to her little friend's house to see if her friend could come out to play. Now, the neighbor had been basically watching and stalking little Megan for months, okay? And, you know, he was heavily attracted to little girls. Nobody knew this. And so when Megan went to her friend's house, the, the little girl wasn't there, so she wasn't able to come out and play with Megan. And so the neighbor, Timothy, found the perfect time. You know, Megan was by herself. Her mother wasn't there. She wasn't with a friend. And he ended up luring her into his home with promise of, you know, come, I got a puppy in here. I have some toys. So Megan, only being seven years old, decided to follow, you know, an adult, you know, adult authority into his home. And once um, in his home, he started essaying her. Um, he basically art her. And then his roommates ended up coming home early and he didn't know what to do. So he stuffed her in a toy box. And then he ended up carrying the toy box out to his truck and took her out into the woods and finished the job. And they searched for her and searched for her. Then they finally found her only to find out that it was the neighbor who did it. The neighbor was a convicted sex offender 
This was not his first rodeo. He had already sexually assaulted other young girls. So because of what happened to seven-year-old Megan, because this was all over the news at the time, um, people were really upset. Like, you know, there has to be some type of measure, something put into law. We have to know when sexual predators move into our neighborhood, when they live right next door. You know, it's our right to know, especially if we have children. So her parents fought to get Megan's law, um, you know, through the legislation and President Bill Clinton at the time, he's the one who approved Megan's law. That is why now in this day and age, we have a sex offender registry and it's very important. And that is how Nicki Minaj's husband got caught up. He thought because he was with Nicki Minaj, all of a sudden the sex offender registry didn't apply to him. No matter where you go in America, it doesn't matter if you move from Brooklyn to Queens or from Queens to LA. Once you get to your destination, you have up to a week to register with the state and let them know that, hey, hello, I'm a sex offender and I'm in this neighborhood. You have to legally. And if you don't, then at that point, they can come pick you up and take you to jail. So that is why Meg the Stallion, you know, used that. And it was, it was a really clever bar and I'm here for it. Okay. I'm here for the bar. And I feel like the bar brought more attention to Megan's law because people talk about the sex offender registry all the time, but they don't know the, the ins and outs and where that came from and how that came to be. And that was because of this young, sweet girl who lost her life, you know, through no fault of her own. And you know, for this father who is mourning, who fought for this law to be put in place to protect other children. I understand his grief. I understand him being upset, but I'm sorry, sir. You have absolutely no case because a lot of these rappers have, you know, mentioned, you know, names and said different things in untasteful manners. It's called freedom of speech. So unfortunately, you have no case against Megan the Stallion. You have the right to feel like it's tasteless. You have the right to feel like your daughter should not be tied up in this beef. I definitely agree with him that he has the right to feel that way. But to me, he has no case because now it's being said that he's looking at lawyering up and possibly suing. And I really feel like a lot of this kicked off because of Moniz, you know, um, but anyhow, now Monice is online ranting and raving. I haven't seen her rant. We just posted it. So we're going to go ahead and watch it live together. I don't give a fuck. I'm not on Billboard. I'm not on the Grammys. I don't got a record with this one. I got to keep it cute with this one. I don't care. I'm a regular motherfucking nobody according to y'all. So treat me as such. Don't get in my DMs when I, when I voice my opinion. Like y'all voice yours. Keep that same energy. Go back in them posts. And y'all get busy, bitch. Y'all got about a, a couple hundred thousand motherfuckers to DM. That's what y'all need to spend y'all night doing. While I get, I took a two hour nap and woke up to mayhem. Now while I get back to moving boxes and loading. That's funny. Y'all remember that happened to me? I took a nap and woke up and my DMs were in shambles, honey. The damn hotties was in their feelings and all, all types of weird shit. So I get where Monice is coming from, but I'm not going to get on the internet and yell like a banshee. Now you all, bitch, y'all need to get on this here motherfucking internet and y'all need to start climbing everybody's DMs that said the same shit I said and threaten to rape them and kill their kids too. See how that works out for you. See how that works. I will never understand people online having an issue with the person during the commentary giving the opinion. If you have an issue with Monice, that is your issue with Monice. Go at Monice. I never understand people trying to drag people's kids into stuff. That shit is weird to me. People threatening people's kids and I'm going to do this to your kid. Like, what does my kid have to do with my opinion? So I definitely understand her for going off. Like, don't threaten my kids, bitch. You threaten me and we can see what's up. But leave my kids out of it. It's out for you. Because I'll tell you what, the first motherfucker I run into that said that shit in my DMs, I'll blow you back myself. I will blow you back myself. Now take that and go tell law enforcement. Or should I go outside and get, and get the guys? They're off duty cops. I'm sure they're watching this right the fuck now. Or should I go get my grandpa, the sergeant? Maybe I should go down to fucking 60s and go get my cousins. We could go either which way you want to fucking go. Oh, not the 60s. She said today she got time because Monice is ready to crip walk and game bang on y'all's asses. She done said she going down to the 60s, honey, and she about to get big cripping them. Okay, Monice. So, that's on you. Show up here and I'll let the law deal with you. 
Catch me in the street, though, my nigga, and it's a different story, and I'm coming a whole different way. So ask about me, bitch. And ask the right motherfucker about me, bitch. And to all you bitches that I saw in the comments, all of a sudden we got imaginary beef, shut your fucking dusty old dusty fuck ass up. Yeah, the streets told me about what you said, you stupid cunt. And I got some bitches for you too. Yeah. And we waiting to catch you too. Yeah, and I'm gonna give you one chance and one chance only to fucking square up and go, I don't believe in sneaking bitches, I don't believe in jumping bitches, you got one shot. One shot. And if you don't drag me, it'll be the worst mistake of your life. That's like pulling a piece on me and not pulling the trigger. Monice wants all the fucking smoke. Monice is here for it. And we know Monice, you know, she be fighting this shit. We seen on Love and Hip Hop. She is really mad. Y'all done set Monice off, honey. What the fuck was y'all saying in her damn DMs? I've never seen it just pop off like this. She's definitely in her feelings. And the craziest part, the niggas that actually know me that was in the... That is what blew my mind more than the rest of you dummies. I expect y'all to be stupid. Y'all don't read to understand. Y'all don't read to comprehend. Y'all read to beef with a motherfucker. It's not my fault that even my own dysfunctional family didn't feed me bullshit growing up. It's not my fault that I was born in 87, but I remember the Megan Conker case. All right, honey. So y'all just heard what Monice had to say. Monice wants all the smoke. She's wanting to call the police, her grandpa, top flight security, and the cribs. Lucky on that day, I was acting cool, cuz. Nigga, what's up? How gangster are you, cuz? I don't fuck with you, cuz. You disrespecting me. I don't fuck with you, cuz. You disrespecting me. I go hard, cuz. Y'all better leave damn Monice alone, okay? She is entitled to her opinion, but I do feel like she was kind of being extra. I don't think Megan meant harm per se towards, you know, Megan Kanka's family. I just think that, you know, with what she was rhyming, it made the most sense. You not mad at me, Pooh. You mad at Megan's law. That's where all this stuff started because he has to register as a sex offender. And he didn't register, you know, and it's been downhill ever since. So, you know, I like the bar. I'm sorry. I like the bar. But again, this is social media where people ride hard for, you know, their faves. So the hotties, they going, you know, they going wild out, honey. I've been there. They don't, you know, have to, you know, giddy up on me a few times. And, you know, with their hooves and shit, it is what it is. This too shall pass. Trust me. Okay. Every now and then you got to pop off on these fandoms and check their asses. But, you know, I, I, I get her frustration because she should be allowed to have her opinion without everybody coming for her. But I also feel like it was kind of... I don't know. Her opinion was kind of weird because I just don't see like what the issue is. I, I don't get it. I can see the father possibly feeling a way, but I don't understand like why Monice felt so mad about it. And then Monice was calling Megan a bitch. So that didn't help either. So maybe some things happen behind the scenes between her and Megan that we don't know about. You know, who knows? Because there'd be a lot of little backdoor industry shit that goes on that people don't know. So it sounds like there might be some extra issues with Megan, you know, hence why she spoke up and said something. Or maybe she's just a, you know, a huge barb and she felt like, hey, I had to have Nicki Minaj's back. Who knows? So with that being said, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Let me know what y'all think about this whole situation. How do y'all feel about Moniz popping off? You know, really feeling away about the situation concerning Megan's Law and Megan the Stallion using that as a bar. And then how do you feel about Megan's father coming out and basically saying that he does not agree with it at all, you know, and that it upset him? Do you guys feel like he has a case? Because like I said, he's thinking about lawyering up. Um, that was updated in another post. Um, I don't think he has a case, but good luck to him. And then overall, how do you guys feel about Monice's rant? You know, do you guys agree with her rant? Do you feel like Monice is entitled to her opinion? How do y'all feel about this whole situation in general? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Make sure you guys hit the video with a like. Feel free to share the video. Most importantly, make sure you still subscribe to the channel and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.